Hello everyone, welcome to 10QV, I'm Don Wiley. What is 10QV? 10 questions about the villages. Each episode, I'll meet with prominent and knowledgeable people here in the villages and the surrounding community, and I'll ask them 10 questions, and I'll get straight and factual answers to issues of importance here in the villages, and we'll try and disprove a few myths, misinformation, and urban legends about the villages. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get started with this episode. Hi, my name is Don Wiley, and this is 10QV. Today we're going to talk with Mr. Bradley Arnold, the Sumter County Administrator, and our discussion today is going to be about the roadway impact fee that's been in the news lately. There's been a lot of controversy over whether to raise it, whether not to raise it. We're not going to get into that issue. We're just going to talk about what it is, what it means to the residents, how it's funded, and its purposes. Well, good morning, Brad. Good morning. Thank you for meeting with me today. Um, so give us a little bit of background about yourself. Sure. I'm the County Administrator for Sumter County, and I've been here since 2006. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with the Boarding Head Commissioners, uh, helping support growth in Sumter County, as well as working with a fantastic team in delivery of services. Uh, those services are provided and prescribed through ordinance and through policies by the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, I have the good benefit of working with uh, other great local governments here in Sumter County as well as uh, working liaison activities with state and federal government as, as required uh, in my position. So for Villages residents, uh, I mean Richard Bear has a, a similar job. Obviously your job has uh, got a, a few more extra responsibilities. There's a lot more going on here in the county. So let's talk first about this, this roadway impact fee. What exactly is it and, and why do we have it? Sure, so the uh, <coughs> road impact fee has actually been in place um, since before I came here in 2006. Uh, the purpose of the road impact fee is to be able to derive funds from development activity to be able to ensure capacity on the roadway system uh, is in place. The impact fee is related to capacity improvements uh, on roads uh, in Sumter County. So the fees that are collected, um, they're, they're used for uh, new construction, are they used for maintenance also? They cannot be used for maintenance. Uh, they can be used for making improvements on existing roadway systems, but those improvements have to be related to capacity improvements. Capacity improvements could be putting in a signalized intersection to be able to assist in the throughput uh, in a roadway system. It could be adding additional lanes. Um, it could also be, as you stated, uh, construction of new roads. So, when, so obviously then when Buena Vista and Morris Boulevard in the villages were repaved, uh, impact fees had, had nothing to do with that. Uh, that maintenance for those roads then comes from, from what source? Well, in that instance that you described, it actually came from general fund. Uh, the general fund transferred uh, the funds into the secondary trust fund, which is predominantly uh, receives gas taxes for its work activity for maintaining roads, but because of the aggressive nature of trying to make those improvements on Buena Vista and Morse in a single year, uh, that's where we actually had general fund provide support for the maintenance of those roads. And you're correct, impact fees could not be used because it was a maintenance activity. So are all the new roads then built with uh, impact fees or just certain ones? Regional roads, uh, those are the main, typically, four-lane facilities that provide the north-south, east-west connecting activity to be able to balance transportation across the county. That's where the road impact fees are dedicated and focused on those particular improvements. Again, whether it's an upgrade for capacity, an existing road, or supporting new construction. Um, but road impact fees are not always capable from the total volume of cash that comes from that to sustain all of those capacity improvements that are necessary. We also pursue grants and we also use gas taxes to support uh, that activity as well. So the, then the secondary roads, the, the residential streets and all that, those are then uh, 
built by whoever happens to be building the community. In Sumter County, most of the time, that's obviously the villages. Correct, and with the new expansion, that's actually within the city limits of Wildwood, and so that is a relationship between developments that are occurring within that jurisdiction um, and how those roads are turned over or not turned over uh, to the city. So the Sumter County impact fee is, I guess, middle of the road as far as the state goes. Uh, some counties have no impact fees. Uh, other counties have substantially higher impact fees, uh, some in the neighborhood of $20,000 for a, a standard home, whereas in Sumter County that's about $2,000, give or take, depending on the type of home. Uh, why the big differences? Sure. Each jurisdiction uh, in the state of Florida makes a determination uh, through study of what they want to try to achieve. And so when we're talking about impact fees, you're correct. Sumter County only imposes a road impact fee. Uh, some of the counties you may mention, the total number of impact fees may actually reach that $20,000 per residential home. So when we do a comparison looking at uh, impact fees to other counties, we actually look at the total impact fees because our total impact fee is strictly the road impact fee uh, in the unincorporated areas of the county. And so from a comparison standpoint, and as you also stated, some may actually have impact fees on the books, but they've suspended those. So when we look at that comparison, we look at the total, Sumter County is really competitive on the single family residential, the age restricted residential, and hotels, but we're not necessarily that competitive in other areas. So we bring to the table other type of support for communities or commercial businesses that may come in if they're only looking at impact fees, we may not be the county to, to come and stay. But if they're looking for how they're going to grow their business, that may be one of those areas that they're willing to pay a little bit of a higher impact fee to still come into Sumter County. And so that's the biggest challenge on impact fees, is finding that balance to where you want to continue to provide support for growth. You don't want to have it as such an obstacle to where they choose not to even come and do business in your community. So the current impact fee uh, study done by Tyndall Oliver back in 2019 came up with a number called a maximum defensible number, and which honestly is like, what the heck does that mean? Help us out here. Sure. Well, maximum defensible, um, you know, that really has a tie to courts. You know, how would the court view the methodology and also how that uh, background data goes into that methodology to be able to justify that it is a fair and equitable basis from which the board would make a decision in regard to setting its particular rates. Um, so that study looks at the Institute of Transportation Engineers manual in regard to trip generation because what Sumter County has is a methodology of consumption based. So how much capacity is being consumed by a new type of commercial business or residential um, unit and they also look at the cost associated with construction that, constructing that capacity looking at local construction data for constructing roads. That's how they come up with ultimately the call it the 100 percent value which is the maximum defensible value for different types of uses. So is the maximum defensible the, the cost that the county is incurring, or are we incurring more or less cost than, than what this study has come up with? So it does incorporate costs that the county has seen in road construction, so that is already embedded in that maximum defensible rate. What is set for what um, consumers actually pay on our road impact fee is currently at 40% of that maximum value. So the the builders, the consumers are paying 40% uh, of the maximum defensible. How does our cost for uh, actual road construction and what we're spending on a year-to-year -year basis compared to this maximum defensible? All right, so the, there's a little bit of a disconnect in the question. Um, okay. Because um, maximum defensible has to do with usage of capacity. It takes into account what is the typical cost of construction that you see in the area and that we've actually experienced. Um, but the question related to our cost of construction are a little bit different um, from the standpoint of <clears throat> it's two, two separate types of questions. 
Uh, then let's, let me ask it this way then. We're collecting several million dollars a year from this road impact fee. How does that compare to what we are spending year over year? Okay, so the board makes the determination of how much money is spent on road construction activities. And so to balance out what the desire is, is actually how much funding is available. Uh, so the road impact fee on average uh, brings in a little under five million dollars per year. And so our construction cost, meaning that the board has chosen to move forward with many projects that are capacity related, exceed the road impact fee dollar amounts. That's where we use gas tax money, that's where also general fund money has been infused to be able to move forward with the number of road projects. And those number of road projects are part of making sure that we're staying at and ahead of uh, all of the development that's occurring in the community so that we don't have safety and other type of transportation um, adverse impacts because we don't have the infrastructure in place. So our sources for funding are then our impact fee and gas tax. Now these gas taxes are listed as credits in the Tyndall Oliver report. That's can correct. You, can you enlighten me on that one? That one's a little strange. Sure, that takes into account that um, some of that capacity usage is already being funded by people paying taxes when they fill up their vehicle with gasoline or diesel fuel. Gas taxes, uh, unfortunately, are a cent per gallon rate, so it's not a, something that is going to be a continued, I'll call it high growth revenue source. Um, some people view that as a percentage of sales, and it is not. It is strictly a cent per type of gallon, whether it's diesel or gasoline. Um, so any growth in the gas taxes revenue have been directly attributed to growth of our community. As we see more efficient vehicles coming in, um, moving to hybrid, all electric vehicles, we see long term that that gas tax may actually decline even as we continue to have population. So that is one of the sources, but because people are paying into it, it's given as a credit in regard to the study related to how the capacity impacts are being funded. So in Sumter County, I mean, we have I-75 and we have the turnpike going through. Uh, it seems like we're getting a lot of extra gas tax from people just passing through our community. That's correct. Uh, that is one of the benefits of being on major corridors um, is you have outsiders, if you will, aiding in contributing the funding. Um, but again, sometimes they'll pop off the exits onto roads. Uh, therefore, they do have some level of consumption of our local road system, but not nearly as much as they actually contribute uh, to the gas tax funding. Well, we certainly appreciate the, uh, the generosity of our other Florida residents here in Sumter County then. So if there's a shortage of funds, then we need to take it from the either the gas tax fund or the uh, the general fund of the county. If there's an overage, so we collect more in uh, impact fees than is actually spent, is that able to go back into the general fund? So no, the, any money is not spent on impact fees for a particular project, meaning that we came under budget on a particular road project, uh, has to re remain within that particular fund. Um, that's the reason why those are set up in fund accounting is they have restricted uses uh, for their particular purposes. So when the general fund contributes, it's actually a transfer into one of those funds. Once it moves into those funds, now it falls into the same restrictions of use. Um, so when we're doing projects, we're balancing, again, making sure that we don't overspend, meaning that the projects that we have lined up that the money is actually there to be able to move forward with a particular project. If the money doesn't come in, then we hold uh, moving forward with a particular project because we cannot um, have a negative balance in, in a fund. We actually have to make sure that the money is there to be able to move forward with any of the construction projects. Generally, how do we justify using general funds for construction of roadways in a new development? such as the villages or, or some other community here in sure. Sumter County? So general fund by its name has the widest discretion of use of the money. And so that uh, decision rests solely with the Board of County Commissioners. 
So for example, um, we entered into uh, the Village's Regional Road Agreement to be able to look at long-term transportation corridors, both north, south, east, west, to be able to make sure that we have good flow of traffic, safe roads, to meet the capacity for all the future development. That's not just from the village's development, but also any of the spillover benefits from that development growth. Um, so that particular agreement uh, has provisions in there for only providing reimbursement, only for the regional roads, and after five years or 15 years, depending on the road within the agreement. So the biggest issue when that agreement was entered into in 2018 is ensuring that the cash is available to be able to meet those initial obligations. Uh, so the Board of County Commissioners made a determination two different fiscal years. First fiscal year was to put $13 million as a transfer from general fund into secondary trust fund. And then the following fiscal year, $5.8 million to ensure that the cash is available to meet those obligations. It's also uh, intended to be able to continue to move forward with the other road projects that are outside of that regional road agreement because we have other capacity needs to be able to uh, continue to support development that's outside of the villages. Yeah, obviously it's a very big county. So this roadway agreement with the villages, uh, why not just put it out for general bid? And it, it seems like we'd get a better price, wouldn't we? Well, we've actually um, performed an analysis. Um, our public works director, uh, who actually is a professional engineer, as well as a professional transportation operations engineer, looked at our actual bid construction cost compared to the construction cost activities that we're providing reimbursement to the villages under that agreement. And the village is actually providing a much lower cost construction uh, value than if we had hard bid it. There's other advantages in that particular agreement is that the developer is providing all the required right away um, which on property which they own. They handle all the long-term stormwater maintenance responsibilities. They provide all the design up front. So those are costs that we're not having to occur, incur. And the other thing is, if you've seen the village's development and the pace of that development, they are in control of that timing of that infrastructure moving forward to be able to meet their construction demand of residential and commercial. That way there's not a conflict between any type of time issues on our delivery of that infrastructure to be able to continue that economic engine moving forward. So it sounds like the county's protecting itself from not being quick enough and keeping up with the villages uh, and, and that's that's a kind of a safety net, that, a side benefit if you will. Well it's actually a, it's a one of the benefits of the public-private partnership that that agreement entails is that there are time issues that they can assist in moving forward. We gain the benefit of those regional corridors, north-south, and we have a lower cost on construction at the end of the day. So it's, it's a really good partnership. So when the villages are building these roads, they're, they're having to put in the infrastructure, the drainage and all that. Uh, what about the rest of the infrastructure going to, to the houses, uh, you know, the, the water mains, sewage mains and all that? Uh, is that, that coming out of the impact fee also or, or someplace else? Someplace else. Um, that is not associated with Sumter County related to those utilities. Um, those are things to where the developer chooses to move forward, typically on a private sector uh, infrastructure improvement process. And then they may, at some later time, work with the Community Development District on the acquisition of those particular assets, or they may actually turn those over to municipal government. It just depends on uh, where they're doing that construction and what arrangements they may have. Our focus is strictly on the regional roads and the new growth of the villages because that new growth is wholly contained within the city limits of Wildwood. So in other words, the, all the, the new infrastructure that's needed to support the villages is being covered by the villages in the form of the bond that the residents pay. Uh, so that's not coming out of the rest of Sumter County. Correct. Our focus is the regional roads and that actually that focus of regional roads again back to partnerships is related to our agreements with our five municipalities. We carry that long-term responsibility for all the regional roads so that we have that continuous conveyance of transportation needs 
where the one jurisdiction may or may not be able to maintain a particular level of that service, the county provides that consistency throughout Sumter County. That provides a level of expectation for commercial businesses and industry that that's a transportation corridor they can rely on long term. Okay. I mean, we focused a lot today about on the villages. What are some of the other projects that this, this impact fee is being used for outside of the villages? Because that's what most people see right now in Sumter County. So from a historical standpoint, some people may not realize that the widening of US 301, which is a state facility, um, from north of Wildwood all the way to the county line, that was paid through road impact fees. Uh, the state did the right-of-way acquisition along with the county, so the county used road impact fees for the acquisition process. The state designed it. The villages actually constructed it, and that section of 301 is outside of the villages. And we provided reimbursement through a road impact fee credit agreement with the villages using road impact fees. That's probably the one that people drive on a lot, and they don't realize that that's where those monies came from, and the type of partnerships that we have with our state agencies. Uh, other improvements that are coming soon using road impact fees is the long-awaited signalization at US 301 and 472. Again, that's a state facility, but the state did not have funding to move forward with that installation of the signal. The county stepped up through the Board of County Commissioner's decision to use the road impact fees to move forward with installing that signal. So we are seeing the use of the road impact fees lately more on intersection improvements uh, so that's one example. We have another one that's coming up, which will be a light at um, US 301 and Pepper Tree Lane. Uh, we'll also be working on a signal at Inspiration Drive and 462, just north of 466A. Again, that's intended to be able to provide better throughput and also makes it safer at those particular intersections. You've stuck mainly to the north end of the county. What about the south end? How, how is it helping the south end? Sure, so impact fees in the past were actually used to do widening of 48, which is a county road west of I-75. That capacity improvement from I-75 to 616 has allowed for growth in that particular corridor. Um, after that uh, construction had occurred, <clears throat> a hotel came in, restaurants came in. Uh, we've recently seen a large gas station recently come in after the state did the improvements at I-75. So there are other capacity improvements that have been used by road impact fees throughout the county. The reason why you see a lot of the road impact fee money used on the north end of the county, that's where the fastest growth rate is occurring, and therefore that's where the greatest capacity needs uh, actually occurring. That makes good sense. So for the current fiscal year, we're about nine months through it now. Uh, how are things looking as far as budget-wise for the impact fees collected and, and the amount of money we're spending? So the Board of County Commissioners uh, did approve uh, an increase in the road impact fees, and that was slated uh, to be instituted June 28th. Uh, we had a lot of commercial activity in the month of June. Uh, many businesses were trying to beat the potential increase. Uh, so June is going to really uh, provide a significant change in regard to what our budgeted target was. We had actually reduced the targeted budget from $5 million to 4.6, and we were online to just about hit that $4.6 in our projections. Uh, I'm waiting for June to be reconciled by the Finance Department, but I will say that June is probably going to throw us above uh, our original budgeted dollar figure of $5 million for the year. Well, excellent. Lots of growth in the Sumter County. Um, so last question, where can Sumter County residents find out more information about the uh, impact fees? Sure, we do have within our code of ordinances, uh, so that is on our website. You can click to that and go and review the full information of our ordinance related to road impact fees. We also have within our building department because typically road impact fees are paid concurrent to the issuance of a building permit. So we have that information on that particular page as well. Florida statutes. Um, also have a specific criteria that's associated with how impact fees are imposed uh, with a recent uh, law that's instituted. Uh, it also talks about how any future increases could actually occur and what the process is for that. Okay, well thank you. Uh, though that information, those links will all be in the description below this video on the YouTube site. Uh, 
Bradley, I want to thank you for, for taking your time today. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us before we wrap this up today? I no, appreciate the opportunity, Don, to share a little bit about uh, road impact fees and how they're used and how we move forward uh, with that to benefit the community on capacity. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. I appreciate you being on the show. Well, that wraps up this episode of 10QV. I want to thank Mr. Arnold for, for joining us today. Uh, the next episode of 10QV will be following in a couple of weeks. Uh, for more information, please see the description below. Thank you again for your time. I'm Don Wiley.